Hey everybody, my name is Paul Esden Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash boygreen25. We're back at it again, baby. The 2023 NFL Draft is over, and once again, we're going to meet the fleet. We're going to be doing a series talking to an insider from where every single draft pick the Jets selected came from to learn more about them and for you, the fans, to learn about all of these Jets draft picks. And, well, we're going back to a guy actually we had on last year. His name, Jared Stansbury. He's the managing editor uh, of Cyclone Fanatic, and we'll bring him right on here because it seems like Joe Douglas has a weird thing for these guys. So let's dive into it. Jared, thanks for taking the time, brother. Yeah, no problem, man. And uh, it, what are the odds that we'd be talking to each other two years in a row? But I thought it was interesting, you know, Friday night, you hear Joe Douglas talk about, you know, for drafting Iowa State guys two years in a row and how, you know, you know, when you draft a player out of Iowa State that you feel like you're going to get a good player. And obviously now there's going to be three Cyclones on the Jets roster. And, uh, mm. you know, there's something about that connection that those guys really like. So let me ask you about that because, uh, you know, it's funny. I was talking about this theme with somebody else. I think it was Randy Mueller, a former NFL general manager, and I said that sometimes there are these constants with schools. Like a certain school is known for, like, pumping out really good offensive linemen or or another school is, like, really bad at pumping out quarterbacks or what have you. There's all these themes or identities or things of that nature. When Iowa State guys are coming to the draft, what are NFL teams getting in a general sense? Yeah, I mean, I think for the most part, you're going to get guys that you know are going to work hard because there, there's not going to be many guys that are coming out that are going to be in positions where, you know, coming into college, it's like everybody's like, oh, this guy's coming for three years and then he's going to go be a first round pick, you know. So it's guys that have had to earn the opportunity to be able to play in the NFL. So I think that's probably a big piece of it. Like you look at, um, I mean, you look at a guy like Alan Lazard, who was undrafted coming out of college, uh, had been a four star recruit going to Iowa State, but I think. Uh, you know, he was one of those guys that's like you turn the tape on, man, and you can see that this guy's a really, really good football player, but he didn't have the pedigree of coming from a Georgia or an Alabama that's going to bump you up in in some of those senses. And um, and I think, too, you know, you just know, like, you're going to get guys that are going to be well-rounded people, you know, for all – like, the thing that I would say about any of these guys that have, have come out of Iowa State the last couple of years, it's like they're all really good guys too, you know. So it's not like they're just good football players. Like they're good people that you feel confident are going to be really good for you in the locker room. So I think that's the biggest thing. And, and you know, I think you're seeing more and more of that come through as Iowa State's been able to put more and more guys into the NFL in recent years. Well, uh, you know, again, this whole conversation will be uh, about uh, Will McDonald, uh, you know, and diving into him in deep uh, depth. But you did mention Alan Lazard, who was this undrafted guy. He goes over to Jacksonville, doesn't work out there. He ends up in Green Bay. And then fast forward a handful of years later, $44 million. I mean, he got the top of the market outside of OBJ's uh, weird one-year deal. Like, he got top wide receiver money coming out. Aaron Rodgers uh, also, who gets reconnected with him, was talking about, again, him getting the bag. Like, talk about that journey, that undrafted free agent to this. Did you think any of this was possible when he was back there at Iowa State to now being a $44 million wide receiver? Like, was that ever within the realm of possibilities? Man, I I don't know. You know, I think we all knew Allen was really good. Uh, I, I think it's hard. It's hard sometimes, you know, especially at a place like Iowa State where the good players that come out of Iowa State, I think maybe people can get an over or an inflated idea of that just because, you know, they're playing at Iowa State. It's like, how how good is that guy, you know? But I can tell you right now, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years and and there were few there are a few things that with Iowa State football that you could just generally rely on every single week. One of those was that Alan Lazard was going to be dominant, you know, and whether that meant he was going to have 10 catches for 100 yards and no touchdowns or if he was going to have five catches for, you know, whatever, 50 yards and two touchdowns, make two plays in the red zone and be able to go up and get the ball. You know, he was just every week you knew that that guy was going to show up and was going to play at a really high level. And um, when you have a guy like that, you know, and again, you know, a guy that chose to stay in school that, you know, continued to, to continue to battle through and, and maybe today's climate of college football. Maybe he's a guy when the coaching change is made, doesn't, you know, maybe doesn't come back to Iowa State or something like that. And, um, you know, just that's what I think has allowed him to be able to stick is that he's a guy that, yeah, he has the elite pedigree of being a four star recruit and, and having some of those elite skills that you need and those uh, just key intangibles that you need 
But, man, he takes advantage of it, and he really works hard and really shows up every day. And I think that's why Aaron Rodgers has been drawn to him. Um, I think he sees a guy who's consistent that just comes in and works really hard every single day. And, um, you know, when guys, you know, when you can find those guys like that, you want to keep them around, especially, you know, obviously Aaron got really comfortable with him in, in Green Bay. Uh, I think he he didn't have a ton of options. So, uh, Alan, by default, you know, kind of becomes the guy, and now it kind of makes a career for him. And Jared, uh, talk to me here because, you know, we have Ocho Cinco's, Divas, T.O., Antonio Brown for different reasons. But we have like all these guys that are like, hey, me, me, me. I want some me. I love me some me. Give me the ball. And then Alan Lazard, I, I've heard from other people, and I'm curious your thoughts as well, that like, hey, man, if I have one catch, whatever. If I have 100 mm-hmm. catches, all right, whatever. I'm all about winning. It's easy to say that, but it's a difference in actually living that in practicality. Yeah, and I can tell you right now, I mean, one of the, the most fun things to watch Allen do is to block. Uh, he's an incredible blocker on the perimeter. And that's where, I mean, I'm excited to watch him block for Brees. Obviously, they never played together right. at Iowa State. So to see, uh, you know, those two guys in the same offense will certainly be interesting for, for everybody back here. But, uh, you know, there was the clip, I think, last year where he goes he goes viral for blocking three people on the same play. Like, that's it's just what he does. Game, yeah. You know, and one of the plays that I can really – that sticks out to, in my mind so vividly of Allen's college career, you know, he had the big touchdown catch against Oklahoma when Iowa State went down there and won for the first time in uh, in, in like 25 years or whatever it had been at that time. And, um, you know, the play – a play before that that kind of set up that late drive that Iowa State was able to go on, uh, they ran a bubble screen to the, uh, to the field side. Allen's guy was uh, – had to block his guy. And instead of trying to take down the ball carrier, Allen was punking these dudes so bad on the perimeter that another guy came in and blew him up while he's blocking rather than tackling the guy who goes sprinting down the sidelines for a 50 yard touchdown reception. But that was what Allen did. Like he could frustrate people because he was just a physical freak, you know, and I think that that's Mm -hmm. what you guys are going to see come out on Sundays is even when he doesn't have a game, uh, you know, maybe he isn't going to have 10 catches. He's not going to have a touchdown. He's not going to have those things. The things that like a fantasy owner, you know, really wants to see, but man, he's going to do the things that help you be able to win football games. And and people are going to see that come out on a weekly basis. I think. And, and like I said, this full conversation will be Will McDowell, but another random nugget here on Brees Hall. He was the offensive rookie of the year, man. Mm-hmm. Like he, he started coming into his own. He was the guy. And unfortunately week seven, Denver Broncos, a terrible day for jet fans. And I'm sure for Iowa state fans as well. In a span of like, Three minutes, we lose our best offensive lineman, Elijah Tucker, formerly of USC, and then Brees Hall, torn ACL. It sounds like he's making a full awesome recovery, which is uh, great. He's an awesome human being and an awesome player. So, you know, again, he w- he could have, should have, would have. Now, of course, the only guy that I guess takes it from him is Garrett Wilson on his own team, who ends yeah. up getting the offensive rookie year. But, man, I-, I think a lot of us are so excited for that home run potential of Brees Hall. He was so exciting to watch, and it just seemed like he was finally coming into his own, like he had so much more to reach in the second half of the year that he never got to see yeah that guy is is just an absolute freak and he was actually back in Ames um man I guess this probably would have been in February or something like that he came to a basketball game and all that cool. stuff at, at Iowa State and uh man it, it's just fun he his smile lights up a room you know so when he comes in and talks to the reporters you know and it's always fun when these guys leave and then come back and get to talk to them again. Cause then like everybody's excited to see each other when they're here all the time, you know, everybody gets, you just are like, man, I'm tired of seeing these people and talk to these people, (laughs) but uh, he was excited to see us. And it was, it's just always fun to talk to him and reconnect with him. And uh, I'm looking forward to see him get back on the field this year. And it, I mean, it's funny. It's not funny, but it's unfortunate. You know, there's a alternate reality in which Iowa state could have ended up with the AFC rookie of the year offensive rookie of the year and the nfc offensive rookie in the year with where brock purdy i think ended up right second in that voting so no one would have ever expected that i don't think uh but somehow you know it just worked out that uh you know those guys were both in good position but hopefully Brees can get back and if he if he does i think there's going to be pro bowls and things like that in Brees's future for sure
Well, that'd be a lot of fun. Iowa State Football Factory, baby. And apparently we're going to have to be doing weekly, or not weekly, yearly interviews with you as uh, the Jets' Iowa State pipeline continues uh, to build. Again, we're speaking with Jared Stansbury here. Again, you guys can follow him on Twitter. Feel free to do so. He gives us all the juicy nuggets. It's at that very handle, at Jared Stan, uh, Stansbury and uh, managing editor for Cyclone Fanatic. Let's get into it. The Jets' first round pick. They take Will McDonald with the 15th overall pick. Will even himself during media interview. Wow. Early. Didn't see that coming. So just uh, in, interesting, you know, honesty from him. The Jets or the draft world excuses like, whoa, Will McDonald, what say you? Uh, on, I guess, Will McDonald, I guess, going higher than even he thought he would and the player that the Jets are getting here. Yeah, so I I don't think anybody really knew what to expect. That was the, the tough thing. So there's a lot of layers to this, obviously, for no. uh, Iowa State had not had a first round draft selection in 50 years since 1973 wow. up until this Whoa. year. So to for anyone to sit there and be like, oh, yeah, Iowa State's going to have a first-round pick this year, obviously you're going out on a little bit of a limb, you know. <laughs> but yeah. I will say, as someone who watched Will McDonald on a week-to-week basis and watches a mm-hmm. lot of college football, I would you would be hard-pressed, I think, to find a player with the last three years' worth of film that was more impressive week in and week out than that guy. And uh, that was just where, and I'm sure we're going to get into it, but I mean, you want to talk about the kind of player you're getting, you're getting a guy who goes and sacks quarterback and is mm-hmm. going to make the quarterback's life a living hell every single time that he's on the football field. And I don't know, you know, the weight thing, like is kind of a, a question mark, I think for people, but yeah. um, you know, is he going to be a, a four down defensive lineman for you, three down defensive lineman for you right away to start his career. Like, I don't know, but man, I can tell you right now, if you want to put together third down packages, when it's time to go and get the quarterback, that guy's going to get back there and he's going to give you a chance to sack the quarterback every time that he's out there. And um, again, like I think a lot of times with draft evaluations, we can kind of overthink it and we start to talk about potential and we start to talk about all these kinds of things. Sometimes you just have to turn the film on. And I think if you turn on Will McDonald's film, it's really hard to walk away from that and be like, yeah, that guy can't help somebody play right now at the NFL level. Maybe you could provide some insight here. This is a question I've heard from a few Jet fans. Why didn't Will come out after 2021? This Again, the production is unbelievable. But after 2020 and 2021 combined, right, he had a 10-and-a-half sack season and an 11-and-a-half sack season. Why did he come back uh, to uh, Iowa State? We just kind of even mentioned it. You mentioned with uh, Alan Lazard uh, choosing to come back uh, for extra time. Why did Will McDonald, in your estimation? Uh, he wanted to become the first person in his family to get a college degree. Which is That's pretty awesome. Cool. Yeah, which is pretty cool. And, wow. uh, man, it's pretty incredible because, I, you know, Will probably would have been a second, third, mid-round pick, something like that last year uh, mm-hmm. if he had decided to come out. Um, but I think, you know, from a, a maturity standpoint and all those kinds of things, that extra year was really important for him. And it felt, you know, right away when he made the decision to come back, I think everybody at Iowa State obviously – you know, selfishly, like you want to bring back Will McDonald, but at the same time, they're going to tell the kid to do what's right for him. I think they thought that that was the right decision for him to make at that time. Um, and man, like Will has not been playing football for very long. This is what I don't think people realize is he didn't start playing football until he was a junior in high school. Before that, he was a basketball player. <laughs> and so, you know, like when he first burst onto the scene at Iowa State, this would have been when he was a, uh, a redshirt freshman in 2019. You know, I asked Matt Campbell just flat out. I was like, man, is Will McDonald going to play his best football at Iowa State? Because I think you could just tell that it's like if this guy like there's probably a ceiling to how good he can get as a college player, you know. But like Mm -hmm. once you get him into the pros, like he just has potential that's so totally untapped. I think in the weight thing, like I think is a big piece of that. Like you get him with a professional strength staff, you get him where his whole life is centered around like being able to add weight and get stronger and things like that. And like you're only focused on football, then you can do more than what, you know, than what he will ever was ever able to do at Iowa State. And he was able to do some, you know, incredible things. His all time leader in, in sacks in the Big 12, you know. So uh, that's probably why I think he came back is that maturity, just another year of playing football. Um, and then, you know, at the end of the day, you want to get that college degree too and be the first person in your family to ever do that. 
Oh, that's a that's an amazing nugget. Again, we're speaking with Jared Stansbury here, learning more about Will McDonald. So what's his ceiling? It seems like it's hard to even imagine because he joined football so late that there is a it's almost like it's a moving field goal post that the ceiling could be ultimately perhaps whatever he wants it to be. Can he be this double digit sack guy? Obviously, the size is a little bit weird, but we're in a new age. If you think about like Von Miller's and stuff, you don't have to be uh, these crazy weight guys uh, essentially uh, coming out where you're uh, the bigger dudes uh, what do you think what what can he be in your estimation you're projecting forward here as jet fans try to dream the impossible dream of what will mcdonald looks like at the nfl level yeah i mean i i would think that you don't draft a player at that level or at that at that position if you don't think that he can become a, a double digit sack guy you know yeah. i think you, you probably automatically feel that already just in, if you feel that highly about him as an evaluator and uh, so I would think, you know, I think that that is certainly in the in the cars. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. System guys that are around you, things like that. Like I'll I'll say, you know, people will ask why is the production why the production drop off so much from you yeah know, 2021 to 2022. And I think there's a couple different layers to that. In 2020, he was playing a, a, across from Jaquan Bailey, who at that time was Iowa State's all time leader in sacks, uh, who was a very very good pass rusher. Got a cup of coffee in the NFL. He's actually on a, a NASCAR pit crew now. Like, got it. And wow. it was one crazy okay. thing. But he, so he had a really good guy across the, uh, the other side from him that could take some attention away from him as well and, you know, eliminate facing double teams every single play. And then the next year, he had Eni Uazarike, who was a fourth pick, fourth round pick to the Broncos last season, who was playing across from him. Another guy that generated a lot of attention in addition to Will McDonald. So when you've got those two guys that can take a lot of pressure off or can put a lot of pressure on people, you know, you got to pick one. And, uh, you know, Eni was like six foot five, 320. So I think a lot of people more often than not would pick him and that would create more opportunities for Will. Uh, but then this last year, you know, Iowa State has had MJ Anderson, who benefited a lot from Will being there uh, and being a, a opposite of him, and and now he's in, he just signed an under uh, an undrafted deal with somebody. But um, Will was facing double, triple teams. I've never seen a player get held as much as him, uh, it, just because there was no way, no other way to block him. If you had to block him one on one, you were in trouble. You know, and you could see it coming before the snap. You know, you could just see, oh man they're going to have to try and take number nine one-on-one -on -one right here, and we're going to see what happens. And more often than not, if number nine was blocked one-on-one, -on -one, he's either getting the sack or he's making the quarterback get rid of the football before he wanted to. And, um, you know, so that's why the production dropped and things like that. But, uh, man, I would be really surprised if Will McDonald does not become a double-digit sack guy in the NFL because that just – some people are put on this earth for certain reasons, and Will McDonald seems to have been put on this earth to go and chase the quarterback, and he does it at a high level. Well, God bless, baby. That's exactly what the Jet fans and Jets uh, team uh, is hoping for. And what can you tell us about when Will started dropping these nuggets? And I was hearing them after he gets drafted. You know, their stories start to be told. Unicycles jumping over cars. What in God's green earth is happening there with Will McDowell? What more can you tell us about uh, some of these interesting uh, passions off the field? So I've never done the research to actually confirm this story. Yeah, but okay. I once heard a story about Will McDonald showing up to a track meet in high school wearing a pair of Chuck Taylors, winning okay. the discus, the high jump, and the 200. Wow. What? In a pair of Chuck Taylors. I'm, I'm dead serious. This is a story that I heard at one point. And then I, I want to say he broke the school record and his high school school record in the discus like the second time he ever threw one. You know, like something crazy like that. So this guy, wow. when you want to talk about it, like you talk about freaks of nature, people that just can do freakish things. Will McDonald is one of those people, you know. And so the jumping over cars, the doing all the, that's the kind of athlete that this guy is. Like he just, you know, obviously those are kind of oddities. And I, I saw too, he said that his his car jumping days are officially over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Now, when yeah. He did his press conference the other night, but uh, it did that's the kind of guy that this guy is. And he's been putting that freakish athleticism on display for a long time, but I will never forget hearing that story about him winning the, winning all that stuff at the track meet when he's like never done it before. And he just showed up and rolled out in some tennis shoes.
What a friggin' story. And by the way, I, I w- I'm not surprised by based on everything that we're hearing about uh, the level of just like athlete that he is, that he could just kind of do that off a whim. That's uh, that's wildly impressive. What about the personality? He seems again, we've only gotten a small taste of the New York media and fans for that matter uh, of him, but he seems a little quirky. It seems like there's a little edginess is how Robert Solid described it to him. What 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 is it to him? What What can you tell us about that? Well, first thing I'd say is he's a man of few words. He He's mm. not going to say a whole lot, you know, but okay. uh, we actually do a, a tour every year where we go. Or, well, we did it. I guess we're going to do it again this year, but we did it last year. But we take some of these guys with us and we go around the state and go to some different locations, things like that, do some events. And we took him with us last year. He went to Omaha and he went to a small town in southwest Iowa and, and hung out with us for a couple of days. And um He's a funny guy, you know, but he just is uh, I think he's just he's just a low key guy, too, you know, and I think some people could perceive that as edginess or some people can just he's just a quiet guy, you know, okay. but uh, man, the edge comes out. Like I said, the edge comes out when he's out on the football field. You know, you wouldn't think that he is uh, a really, you know, kind of laid back, quiet guy, but that's the vibe that you get from him when you're around him in interviews and things like that. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. I'm interested to see what, how he continues to grow just as a person. Cause um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that he was the greatest interviews that we ever did or anything like that. But, <laughs> but when he did talk, you know, he usually was pretty insightful in the things that he would, that, that he would have to say. Uh, all right. Let me, uh, let me ask you this one. Uh, so uh, I did some of the work that you do, but in a Syracuse world uh, over the last couple of years, uh, pre COVID. And one of the players uh, I had the you know opportunity that really st- stuck, uh, you know, sticks out to me is Zaire Franklin, who ended up being a Colts draft pick. And then uh, he has uh, developed into a starter. It's really cool. But as I've interviewed all these players over the years, over the last 10 years, whatever it is, is that, you know, after I spoke with Zaire at his pro day and he went to go talk with some NFL teams in the side room after he was done with the media, I just said to myself, like, man, if I could put my career doing sports ish on the line for a Syracuse prospect that's come out, it's Zaire Franklin that I would pound it on the table. He's going to make it for whatever reason. Again, he ends up being a seventh round pick. So it's not like you're saying it for a first round pick. And then now that he's the starter, I just went like, wow, OK, something felt right about that one different than all these other Syracuse prospects that have kind of come through. If you were presented that same question, opportunity, like thought process in your mind, how confident do you feel that Will McDonald's going to make it? Because like sometimes kids are great in college, but they just don't make it for whatever reason in the NFL for a variety of reasons. H- how confident do you feel that Will McDonald's going to be a guy at this level? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i very confident that at the very least he can be a third down pass rush specialist for you you know, yeah, like a really good one. Yeah. like that. And mm-hmm. that to me feels like the absolute floor. I would be really, really surprised if he does not become a really dynamic pass rusher. Obviously the ceiling is to become a, you know, three down every down type of player that could be an NFL all pro. Like, I, I don't know if that is going to happen, but I think he is one of those guys that you look at that has a, a really high floor in addition to having really high potential. And that's why, I mean, frankly, like that's why I would have drafted him high because I would have been like, yeah, he's got high potential. But I also think he just has the raw intangibles of the kind of guy that, you know, is going to be able to just stick purely based on his God given ability, you know. And um, when you've got a guy like that, like that puts you in a really good position. And so I would be I would be very, very surprised if it did not work out for Will McDonald for him to be playing football for a very long time and making a lot of money doing it. Jerry, before we get you out of here, uh, this is one of my favorite questions to ask, and it's one of the most simple questions. But I've over the years of doing this series, I've gotten some of my best answers from asking this question, so we'll keep the streak going. Is there anything else that Jet fans should know about Will McDonald that we haven't touched on? A, it's, a, it's a story. It's some insightful nugget. It's anything on Will McDonald that people, Jet fans, should know uh, about him that for some reason, like I said, maybe we haven't heard in his press conference or we haven't even heard uh, during this interview that stands out to you in some way. He is the only player I've ever covered that the people he went against in practice every day would continually bring up how he breaks practice. He is so good that he breaks practice. What do you mean by that? Because the offensive line couldn't block him. So they couldn't, (laughs) they couldn't do anything to be able to, you know, they're like, if number nine's out there, we're in trouble. Like that was literally all it was. And there was, that's in practice, you know? So I think there were times where Will would maybe be, 
you know, it's like, okay, we need you to dial it back a little bit for this one, brother. We got to, <laughs> we got to try to get this thing done. But I, I don't know how many times that I heard that from different offensive linemen that they would say, it's just, it, you know, you ask them about trying to block Will and it's like, pff, nobody can block Will. <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's so cool. Well, I would think he'll challenge the offensive line in practice from the day that he gets in there because he's just he's just that kind of guy, you know. And the spin move that he's got, I know people have com- uh, you know compare his spin move to Dwight Freeney and sure. you know, he's got guy, way, yeah, yeah, got a, got a long way to go to be Dwight Freeney, uh, but man, he's got some of that raw potential that I think uh, could make him you know a long time player in the NFL. Well, uh, Jared, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. I'm looking forward to following the 2024 NFL draft, which, by the way, hook us up. Who Who is going to be the guy? Who are the NFL draft guys coming out of Iowa State? Just so we could get familiar, so we know what names we're probably talking about. Who Who the hell are the Jets drafting from Iowa State so we could keep this train rolling for a third straight year? Who's the Man, guy? I know you guys are pretty set up at the, at the one corner spot. I don't know about the other one, but there's, there's a kid named TJ Tampa that's coming out this next year from Iowa State that is a – is a hell of a football player and would have had a lot of opportunities to go and make a lot of money at some other schools. If he would have chosen to do so uh, from an NIL standpoint, he will be an NFL guy. I don't know if he's a first round, second round type pick, but he will, he will most certainly be an NFL guy. So keep an eye out for that one. Maybe it'd be a mid round pick for the, the jets next year. All right. Beautiful. That is in the back of the mind, Jared, uh, as always, thank you so much, pal. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing this again and uh, it'll be fun to watch uh, Will McDonald's career. And of course, all the new jet fans in Iowa state land that are rooting for all these Iowa state guys on the jets. It's uh, it's going to be a fun thing uh, to watch, man. Thank you. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you having me on. There he is. Jared Stansbury. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time.